Back with another episode after doing some trout fishing at Terry Trueblood in Iowa City. Uh, Generally, the DNR does a stocking program of urban bodies of water in the early spring that um, they they put trout in these lakes when the water is still cold enough for those trout to swim around in, and then it allows local anglers to come out and pursue these species that they don't necessarily always get a chance to. Today, guess who's with me again? Callie. So we uh, together went and did the little trout fishing at Terry True Blood. Uh, we had a pretty good day, I would say. It took us a little while to get rolling, wouldn't you say? Yeah. A lot longer than we anticipated, considering they were released only a couple hours before we got there. But finally figured it out, got some fish in our bellies later on, and had a good day despite all the fishermen that were out there. Yeah, as you can see, there are tons of people lining the shores, giving me anxiety. And here's a guy catching one. So you see how these people are like catching fish around us, and it's incredibly frustrating because the trout are pretty centrally located at the first spot that they were dumped off. And here is a swing and a miss. Uh, the trout are, aren't always the easiest to hook. They, they short strike a lot. Did you find that they did that too, Callie? Uh, more than a few times I started to get really frustrated because I felt like I had a fish on and then it would just be gone. And another swing and a miss. I feel like I'm commentating baseball rather than my own fishing video at this point. And there are also a couple that I left out in terms of fish that I missed or swings and misses. I mean, I wasn't going to throw in every single one. So, Callie, what happened here? (laughs) Okay, so first I thought that I broke the pole (laughs) because nobody informed me that it's actually a two-piece pole and the top part comes off so that you can store it more easily. But I cast and the whole thing came apart and I didn't know what was going on. So, it was a little fun, a little excitement for the afternoon. Fortunately, the line didn't break, so we got the pull back and everything was okay. The problem with those two-piece rods is when the line breaks and then you don't get anything back. And then you're just left with half of a pull. All right, Callie, so here's your first fish. What happened here? I I caught one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, First you fish did. of the day. I was on the board first, so that was fun. Um... It was one of the better sized ones that we caught, I would say, and he really wanted it. He pretty much gobbled it up, so he wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, the the fish, normally I would be a little nicer to the fish and not use a stringer, but honestly, in my experience with trout, using a stringer is what keeps them alive the best, because they can't move around enough in a basket um, in a bucket, there there's no moving water at all, and that water's going to heat up too fast to keep them alive. So, honestly, in my time trout fishing, the stringer is the best route. It does not seem like the most humane, um, and it most certainly isn't, but it's the best way that i found to keep them alive while we're, while we're catching them. And honestly, you know, these trout are being put here by the DNR to eat, to be consumed by... Uh, the people who have paid money for their fishing licenses and their trout stamps. Um, So these fish are meant to be eaten. They're not meant to live in this body of water all year. So here's my first fish. After making several lure changes and trying to figure out what's going to work best, I finally settled on a panther martin in a trout pattern, and it it produced for me. The problem is is like around the docks are where most of the fish are, are circulating. Trout like to roam. But where they're dumped off, they don't like to roam too far from that original location. So these are like the outliers that Callie and I are getting at this point that are swimming furthest away from the school. And that's why you'll see in the video as we progress closer to the dock, the bites get more and more frequent. So second fish here, I believe, Callie, right? Mm Mm-hmm. At this point, we were keeping score, and I was winning two to one. She was. She was beating me most of the day. It was kind of frustrating at first because she was getting bites and losing fish before I even was um, 
before I even really missed any fish or was even on the board. So fortunately, I kind of copied Callie a little bit and it helped me. Well, and she's very excited, obviously, to be beating me at my own game. This was fish number three. I snagged a carp. I thought it was a huge fish at first, but turns out I just snagged him in the back, so he had a lot of resistance coming in. Yeah, Callie fought that fish for quite a while. I'm not sure what happened to the footage of that fight or if I was changing lures and the camera wasn't on. I'm not really sure, but it was definitely not there. But we got the fish nonetheless, and Callie thought that was kind of cool to catch something different than a trout. All right, here we go. Fish number two for me. Uh, again, not a giant. None of these trout were really that big. There's a couple that we got that at the end that were kind of closer to that 14 inch range, but most of them were just over 10. And, and again, I, I understand that the DNR is just stocking them for the sake of people to eat them. So another nice little brook trout ready to hopefully be smoked by my dad here in a couple of months when the weather levels out a bit. See another swing and a miss again. It's, uh, it's like the movie major league at this point. Callie doesn't think that reference is nearly as funny as I do. <laughs> they call this a home run then when you connect with one? Is that what it is? I don't know if you'd call it a home run. These aren't like giants. Okay. This would be like maybe a base hit. Yeah. A snagged carp would quantify as a ground out. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see the friendly guy that came over just to talk about what we were fishing with. He was very interested. He wasn't actually fishing himself. He just was watching us for a while. Friendly or looming, you guys be the judge, I guess, on that one. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He he was actually really friendly and just kind of wondering what we were using. Swing and a miss again. Oh, man. Better check the pole and make sure everything's working, I guess. And then get back at it. All right. Figured that out. Oh, look. I think Callie's got one again as I was trying to get my tangle up out. We'll see. Yep. Yep, as I'm trying to get something done, Callie, of course, is hooking up. Callie, I'd say you got pretty darn good at catching these trout by the end of the day. Uh, there were a few miscues later on, but... Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the first part of it went pretty well. And then, I think almost immediately, it was the next cast, I caught another one. And I was at four, and I was winning four to two for a while. It was a pretty good day. Yeah, four to two for a little bit. But uh, that changed once I yelled at some kids, and they left. And then um, I took over the dock where the fish were initially released. Which is actually really interesting because, like, people were just catching fish after fish, and you think that these fish would get conditioned at some point to what is going on there, but uh, that is not the case. Apparently, uh, my hook taking out skills are a little rusty from sitting around all winter or this lull between ice fishing and normal fishing. I don't know, but uh, apparently, I was struggling more than I realized. So here's kind of a cool bite. Uh, the The fish just absolutely hammered it by the dock. I mean, this fish was just on it, inhaled it, and he was on the. Sh he basically, essentially, launched himself onto the shore from hitting it so hard, which is kind of cool. But at the same time, they're really fun to fight on the ultralight gear, so it kind of stinks when the fight only lasts like five seconds. Again, my struggles with hooks continue. Yeah, don't worry, I edited out the uh, multi-tool footage and the multi-tool struggles that I had as well, so uh, I figured I'd save myself that embarrassment. But this is by far my biggest fish that I caught all day, and unfortunately it's only about 14 inches, so not even close to a like, PR trout for myself. But as you can see, we've got a pretty good little pile of them going here. Um, really excited. Those fish are really excited to be on the smoker. And strike five. Um, basically what happened there is that fish ate it right by the shore. And I don't know how he didn't get hooked, but it just didn't happen. So who knows? 
but it just didn't. Sometimes they sometimes they just come unbuttoned and you don't know why. And another one came unbuttoned right there. Or no. Nope, I lied. This isn't one that came unbuttoned. This is fish number five for me. This is me filling out my limit, uh, dodging around the pole, and being done for the day. So here's the swing in the miss that I thought the last one was. But uh, that is my last swing in the miss. So if you're keeping track, then I would have struck out about twice in the course of this video. So Callie's got a fish, trying to get it around the pole. There was a serious struggle at this point. I couldn't decide which way to go. All right, just got done trout fishing. It was a lot of fun, a little cold outside, but got the spring itch kind of taken care of for today at the very least. Callie, how was the trout fishing today? It was great. We both caught our limit. I had a small child tell me how many fish I lost right after I lost a good one. So, not so great. But overall, it's a pretty good day. Yeah, turns out little kids can be rude from time to time. Anyway, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks.